السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون that fasting has been prescribed upon you just as it was prescribed upon those before you that perchance they may have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's an axiom amongst the ulama that says a thing is known by its objective and the objective of fasting is to gain taqwa. Therefore, fasting is a highly exalted thing. And we become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our fasting. And part of being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be conscious of our fellow creature, our fellow man. And this increases empathy. When we fast, we experience what it's like not to have food, that people live like this on a daily basis. And when we increase our empathy, we increase in our compassion. And when our compassion increases, we become like the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala describes him by saying, فَلَعَلَكَ بَاخِيُ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ أَثَارِهِمْ you're almost killing yourself grieving over them, that he is harisun alaykum, that he's deeply concerned about us. So this is something that we need to inform our non-Muslim friends and neighbors, that fasting is not something that comes out of thin air. It's not something that Islam invented or that the Quran invented, that fasting has deep Abrahamic roots. In fact, the word for fasting in Hebrew and in Syriac, which are the languages of Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam respectively, the word for fasting is also tsom. It's pronounced exactly the same. It is an exact cognate of the Arabic. And this word is mentioned dozens of times in the Old Testament. For example, David writes in the Psalms, chapter 35, verse 13, he says, Inayti but tsom nafshi. He says, I have disciplined or I have humbled my soul through fasting. Not only is fasting found deeply rooted within the Abrahamic tradition, but the Prophet ﷺ, his uh, typologies are also found within the books of Ahlul Kitab. Of course, we know the events that happened during the month of Ramadan, uh, during Laylatul Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr, wa ma adraka ma Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayru min alfi shahr, that this night of power is greater than a thousand months. We read in Proto Isaiah chapter 29 12. He says, the book shall be given to one. Lo yada' safer. He doesn't know a book, meaning he's unlettered. And it shall be said to him, qira, which is the exact uh, cognate of the Arabic iqra, present active imperative. Read, and he shall answer, lo yada'ti safer. I don't know a book, I am unlettered. This is what it says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 12. This Laylatul Qadr was prophesied in the books of Ahlul Kitab. Of course, we know when the Prophet ﷺ, when he went to Medina al Munawwara and the Jews were fasting on Yomi Ashura, he said, Mahada, in other words, why are you doing this? And they said, This is to commemorate the exodus of Musa السلام, from the Fir'aun. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, We have a greater claim to Musa. السلام. And interestingly, back then, the day of Ashura corresponded exactly with the ninth, with the tenth day of the first month of the Hebrew calendar, which is called Asar Abi Tishri. And this is also known as Yom Kippur. This is the holiest day of the Jewish calendar. And after the Christian era, the Jews began to use a leap uh, month every so often, every three or four years, to put their calendar more in line with the Gregorian Christian calendar. But Muslims continue to fast on the true authentic Yom Kippur. This is something we should tell our non-Muslim uh, friends and neighbors about. We read in Matthew chapter 4 that Isa alayhi salam, he went to the wilderness just before the Injil, the gospel, was revealed to him. And Matthew writes in the original Greek, he says, Kai nesteusas hemeras tesserokonta, kai nuktas tesserokonta, that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Isa alayhi salam. We have to let people know that Isa alayhi salam fasted. This is a confirmed practice of Isa alayhi salam. And of course, devout Christians will fast during this 40 day period, which begins on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. This is called Lent that Isa alayhi salam also did. And of course, Isa alayhi salam is mimicking the fast of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, according to the Torah, he fasted 40 days and 40 nights on Mount Sinai. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ وَعَدْنَا مُوسَىٰ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَىٰ That we gave 40 nights to Musa alayhi salam. And the great medieval Jewish theologian, systematic scholar, Nahmanides, he said that Musa alayhi salam, during this time, he neither ate nor did he drink. And this happened over a 40 day period. So the number 40 is very significant in salvation history. And this is something we should inform people about as well. That the Prophet ﷺ, he was preserved from idolatry for 40 years before the Quran was revealed to him on Laylatul Qadr, which by the way, again, was prophesied in the book of Isaiah chapter 29. There's also an interesting document called the Didache. Didache means teaching in Greek. 
This was written around the time 100 or so of the Common Era. The Didache is believed by many pre-Nicene church fathers, patristic scholars, as being authentically from the disciples of Isa a.s. And many scholars believe it was actually originally written in Syriac, the language of Isa a.s. It was lost for a long time, but then rediscovered in a monastery in 1873. This represents the teaching of the original Hawariyun to the Gentile believers. And what does it say? It says Christians are expected to fast two days a week. Christians fast two days a week. And of course, the Prophet wasallam he used to fast regularly on Mondays and Thursdays as well. So this is something that we've inherited from our Abrahamic ancestors. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 through 18, it's very, very clear. Isa salam during the Sermon on the Mount, he says, whenever you fast, don't be like the hypocrites who walk around groggy and they're tired. He says, wash your head, anoint your face, because your Father in heaven, and when he says your Father in heaven, he means you are a spiritual father. This has nothing to do whatsoever with God being the literal father of anyone. This is still found in Jewish liturgy even today. When Isa alayhi salam taught his disciples how to pray, according to Matthew chapter 6, in the Syriac language, he said, Avunda vashmayo nethkata shmoch, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, all of us. But this idea was corrupted by Christian theology. Therefore, we don't call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our father. But when it occurs in the Old Testament, it's meant to be like Rabb. He is our Rabb. He is our sustainer. He is our cherisher. So he says, when you fast, do it in secret so your Father in heaven will reward you in secret. And this reminds us, of course, of the beautiful Hadith Qudsi, which the Prophet ﷺ tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kullu amali ibn Adam lahu illa siyam fa innahu li wa ana ajzibihi. That every act of the son of Adam is for himself except fasting. That is for me and I will re reward my servant. And the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is manifold without any parameters. There's no storehouses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives and gives and gives subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are also health benefits of fasting that we should convey to our non-Muslim friends and neighbors. Fasting reduces our caloric intake. It reduces the risk of obesity, which is the number one killer of Americans, even more so than heart disease, obesity. Also, it's confirmed in research that fasting reduces the risk of cancer and heart disease and diabetes. It slows the aging process. It increases the maximum lifespan of a human being. Dr. Mark P. Matson, who's chief of neurosciences at the National Institute of Aging, he says fasting every other day, which is called intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting. Of course, we know this as being the fast of Dawood alayhi salam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said the most beloved type of siyam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fast of Dawood alayhi salam. Now we have this Dr. Matson saying that fasting every other day has major, major health benefits and includes a significant reduction of bad cholesterol in the blood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase all of us and accept our fasting for his sake. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.